Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're going to fire up another another Wachtem Ryan file. Uh, today we're going to be doing the axis movement, and pretty excited to uh, to get this rolling. Now we've gotten through the pre-AM stuff and uh, the pretty pretty boring allied movement and stuff like that, since there's not much to do. Um, so appreciate you watching. Uh, Please make sure you hit subscribe and click on the bell so that you get notifications. And I also have an Amazon affiliate link in each of our uh, my videos that I do. So if you want to use that to support the channel, I, I don't have enough subscribers or views hourly right now to have ads or anything. And um, I don't have any sponsors or anything like that. Maybe someday that'll happen, but for right now it's strictly a labor of love. Uh, and, you, and I also do link, I have a game store called Little Big Wars, and I do now put a link to that website uh, that has a lot of our stuff that we carry in the store. Not everything, so if you're looking for something specific, you can always call us too, but we got a pretty good staff there. So wanted to uh, get right into this today, um, try to get through this movement, and depending on how long the file gets, I like to keep them to about 45 minutes to an hour if I can. Uh, if we get to that 45 minute to an hour point, we probably won't do another file, but otherwise I do have the allied uh, defensive fire uh, ready to go. So we can do that as well. Um, all right. Oop, I don't know why I closed that. Let's see. I wanted to... Uh, okay, so basically let's get rolling on this. So we're going to do the allied movement, or the, I'm sorry, the German movement. And um, we'll just kind of play through here. So the start of the Axis AM turn is what Clay says. Uh, we don't have to worry about fuel on the December 16th AM turn. So he's going to do mode determination. So he's so right up here you can see he's starting to put all of his dudes into prepared assault. Looks like he's going to hammer that spot there. Yeah. He's got a guy there. Guy down there. <laughs> It's fun to go back and watch. Uh, we're actually up on like the 20th AM turn or something like that. And it's fun to go back and watch some of these early ones. It's also interesting. I would love to go back and redo so much of my stuff because I know a lot more after playing that many turns with mistakes I've made tactically, logistically, all that good stuff. Plus, we've just learned a ton of the rules Um I know the rule's pretty good, but if you don't play regularly, it's easy to it's easy to just have them basically slip by. So all right, so he did all his prepared assaults. Now he's going to do put batteries in and out of battery. Uh, special Wachtem Ryan rule states that units that started in battery must stay in battery. So the Germans can't start moving their batteries and their guns up yet. They have to wait. So construction, so he's not going to do it on a battery because he can't. Uh, start with heavy bridge construction first. At the start of the ca campaign game, uh, Germans are allowed to start one heavy bridge during the pre-AM turn, which is here. So, so he's doing it right there, but where he put that spade. I will turn that counter to complete it. Okay, so he's got that. So this hex, hex southeast 4822, is open to cross the river. Yay! <laughs> Next heavy bridge marker to start construction will be here, hex southeast 4517. Looks like he's going to do one there. I don't want to hover over it because I don't want to see a stack by accident. But he's building a, a bridge there. I rotated the heavy bridge counter to show it is under construction. Okay. Let's see who is next. Hex Southeast 4413 to start a heavy bridge. So up here. By the second panzer. No regular construction to begin for improved position or entrenchments. Uh, oops, I made a mistake on a prepared assault unit in the north hex, northeast 5829. 
That unit in front of that hex should be in PA, not that unit. Okay, that's fine. So we're 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 pretty we're pretty laid back. Like if we're doing road movement, we find a guy that we forgot to do road movement on, and we're actually on to we passed road movement. We'll we'll let the other guy go back and do it. We're not gonna be like, oh, you forgot your road movement. Screw you. Technically, should we do that? Probably because that would cause you know the more of the chaos and maybe fog of war maybe i don't know but it, it, we're just wanting to enjoy the process in the game not have the gotcha moments you know what i mean so same with that like if if he forgets to mark a guy prepared assault or mark too many and then looks at it later and goes oops i forgot you know i don't care clay doesn't care we're pretty laid back it's really up to you how strict you want to do that stuff um like I said, I'm just really love. I just really love the Goss system as far as the complexity and the history that you can watch and learn. Just, just flabbergast. It just, it's just crazy. Again, uh, I've said this on some other uh, YouTube chats where I've been in the chat and stuff. And the guys that design these, hats off to you guys for all the detail. I just. I just don't even understand how you could do all that stuff and and uh, it's awesome. So thanks for that. But anyway, so we fixed that. Back to construction. So, okay, well, it does look like he is doing some IPs or something here. So he's doing an IP there. So he's done with construction. Combat reserve mode. All right, so he's got a guy up in combat reserve. So I'm guessing he's really going to want to go after this. 394th Regiment, 2nd Battalion. <laughs> that looks like they're going to get peppered. Oh, yeah. He's coming on hard there. He's got another guy down there. Nope, maybe not. He put him in prepared assault instead. Some more combat reserves. So, you know, it says center on the unit move on Vassal, and I wish it would center on the move. It, a lot of It's on the edge normally. So you got to kind of follow along here, but all right. So movement phase, road movement. I'll start in the north and work my way down to the south. I don't know for whatever reason that's kind of the the habit Clay and I both have is just starting up north and zipping to the south. All right, so. Looks like he's moving the 277th guys. I'm going to kind of center on that a little bit more so we can see the movements a little better. Just moving that HQ up there. Moving some other HQs. Some motorized engineers up north there. Just moving his heavy bridge building stuff down. Heavy bridge, dude. Another heavy bridge, dude. I don't even remember all these heavy bridge guys moving down there. And looks like we got some armor support up here for the 12th VG. All right, so the reason for me to move my division HQ is because they started on a path which by Goss rule HQ cannot trace supply path from HQ to HQ. Yeah, so that'd be a problem. So I've been moving my HQs onto primary or secondary roads. I think Hurtkin has some, some stuff like that where they had a setup hex where they had an HQ, so it basically put the whole division on a supply. Uh, let's see. So he's got the third Falschemager, he just moved down here. I created a battle group one for units of the 150th. Oh, okay, so he was down here. So you can see right here, he put these little labels, BG1. So he made a little battle group out of these guys. I 
And he said, Fifth Army has two truck points to motorize leg units. Guess he's going to motorize these dudes here. He said he couldn't find a motorization marker, so he's going to use a uh, army truck marker, which is fine. That's just some of the oddities. On, this is a very old Vassal mod compared to the new stuff they've done. So, All right, get on here to the 116th Panzer. Some mechanized for the fifth Fallschirmjäger. Using that new bridge. Some seventh army assets moving up here. I don't remember what this symbol is. I think that's anti tank. But I don't know what that thick bar is on there. I would like to look that up, but I will not do that while we're just doing a playthrough. I will do that later. All right, so non-road movement. So, a little problematic here. There's a little bit of a gap. He's starting to pour his third Falschenbeger into here. And looks like he's going to attack this dude up here and try to... And then eventually, I'm sure he'll go after these guys. Now, <laughs> it's funny because as I look at this file, I know some things that are happening on over here later on. They get kind of fun, but I'm, I'm trying not to do that with spoilers. But yeah, it's fun to watch the old files actually and see how things developed and what happened. So just going through the movement file, I think we might be able to do the defensive fire support. That's a little more exciting. I thought movement would be a little more exciting, but it's probably a little more boring to watch. So. Moving, some, moving up some arty. It's probably the most quiet you guys have ever heard me on here. Only 6th Infantry Division now, where are they? Well, he's obviously hopping off of these guys to probably go after this spot. What do we got there? Ooh, that's an engineer company and a regular company. It's probably the 28th. Yep, 28th Infantry. 28th Infantry Division is horribly spread out in the Ardennes. It's a huge weakness. If, if I think it would have went a lot better if they would have had even just one more division and the 28th wasn't covering so many miles. So, all right, we got another Falschimager unit down here. We got a little potential gap act. A lot of gaps, actually, because of the lack of dudes, lack of allies. One of the things, you know, you're not allowed to observe your opponent's stack, but they have to move every unit individually. So 
as you're seeing stuff move, you want to be observant. Like I spotted a little under the fifth Falschmager there. I spotted some armored support for them. So I know there's some armor there. And we're way down south here with the fourth. There's not a ton of activity that happens down here. All right. Prepared assault moves. So this one moved first, so he's he's gonna pummel that dude there. That guy moves. I, I guess he's gonna go after this corner here. It looks like. So these guys are gonna move now. So those guys shifted. These guys down here, they're just already ready to go. Just prepared, and these are the two guys that are hopping off on that that we just talked about. Quick construction, and he can put troops into tactical assault. So he's going to do a tactical assault there. I'm guessing he's going to try to go after this mech motorized artillery. Yeah, he's going to try to beat up the 28th ID. A little anti-tank there, so we'll see what he's got there. Man, I don't remember him doing all these tactical assaults. It's crazy. Good stuff. And he was just so what he did there is he wasn't putting it on him, but you copy this. And then he moved it over there. Replacement phase. He has one replacement for infantry. And he can give it to somebody who hasn't moved. He is going to save it over to the Allies for defensive fire support. So I guess we will have some time to do that. I thought that file would be longer. He said, I'm thinking about setting this up on my table for a better view. So one of the things uh, Clay doesn't like Vassal because it's really hard. I, I agree with him on this, that it's really hard to see the overall picture of what's going on. I mean, you can do this. Right? But then you can't really see anything. You know, so that's, if it's set up on your table, obviously. So like me personally, my favorite is to play face-to-face -face and moving counters and stuff like that. I think Vassal has a lot of really good merits, though, because you can look at stacks without moving them. And with my fingers, I tend to knock things over. Even, even using tweezers, that's not optimal because they, they I'm still not great with them. But, you know, so you got this view here. You know, you can kind of get an overall understanding of the what's going on per se. But, you know, that's not, you know, you really can't see it, right? And if you zoom in this way, now you start to lose that overall perspective. And even here, it's really hard to see everything, you know. So when you get down here where you can see more what stuff is, you know, you're kind of zoomed in and you're kind of isolated into those areas. So some guys have trouble with that. I, I do. I have trouble with understanding the overall big picture. I, I've played many games this size where I, I'm busy doing something in one area and I go, oh, I forgot. I've done it on this field. I don't know if I'll say it or not, but I've done it on this where it's like, oh, I forgot to save those guns for a, for a, a attack down there you know so anyway so he's thinking about setting it up on his table <coughs> i don't think he ever did that but um you know he was talking about doing that all right so let's uh close this one down just want to make sure the file number it was file 19 so we want to go to file 20 we're only at 20 minutes, so that went a lot faster than I thought. So we should be able to do the Allied Defense Fire Sport, keep it within that 45 minutes. This will be a little more exciting. Uh, we'll see how my artillery does here. So let's zoom on in. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> that's, that already kills me with like... Like the counters are like this big, right? You'd be like moving them like this. Okay, so let's zoom out one more. Okay, so Allied defensive virus. So I said, okay, this is getting serious because yeah, I didn't. 
I didn't like where he was starting to move into some of these gaps and stuff. You know, I'm starting to feel a little vulnerable. So let's see what I do. I don't remember. I'll start up north. It seems to work nice. So reminder, I still get minus one for my artillery. I'll do spotter, then the target, then I'll mark the gun. So that's usually like, so we'll use these spades. So I mark the spotter and I don't want to hover over the targets of his because now it doesn't matter because this file is super old. But when I was, you know, when we were doing it before, you wouldn't want to hover over something like this because, well, this doesn't matter because it's only one unit. And you can look at one unit, but a stack here, you can't, go, you can't go look at the stacks, you know, like now it doesn't matter because this file's like, I don't know, 10 turns old. But you can't go and look and go, okay, let's see, which one has the most guys in it, most steps, and make sure there's no armor. You kind of have to just go by what the stack looks like, right? So, like, normally I would try to call it in on these bigger ones if I can. Well, these guys I can't see, but, you know what I mean? If these were guys were assaulting, because, you know, you want to... Uh, maximize your damage but you can't do that you can't look at the stack you can only see the top unit is the rule and i guess i'm not 100 percent sure if you guys veteran players out there if anyone's watching if you have a prepared assault marker on there i don't think that doesn't allow you to look at the top unit but you can't really in vassal be because if, as soon as you hover over this you would see the whole stack so so there's that. Okay, so anyway, so this is my spotter, target, and then I'll mark the guns. Boom, boom, way up there to the northwest. I have two guns on that stack, on the, so the bottom one can fire 14. And so, okay, so that gives me eight, and I'm on a VP, so no negative, so eight, plus the die roll, plus C and D. Now, uh, like I said, it's not really a tutorial per se, but just, you know, in case somebody's watching to learn how to play a little bit, the C and D, so when you do artillery, so here's the artillery, uh, modif uh, I'm sorry, that's not the artillery, but yeah, that's the artillery modifier. So here's the groups. So I'm going to fire, uh, barrages are fired in uh, units of eight. So for every eight strength points, you get to fire a barrage. Um, and then the defender gets to have these modifiers, but uh, you only get to pick uh, two from A, B, and C, right? So you can't use A, B, and C for all these modifiers. You can use two of them. So obviously you'll always have terrain. And if you have defensive works, you have to decide if those defensive works are better or not than the armor mixed or pure. So if you have mixed armor at negative two, you'd rather, so if you had, if you had armor in there and in infantry, you get a negative two. If you only had an IP or a destroyed fortified area, that would be a negative one. So you'd want to take the negative two, ignore the negative one, and then take whatever terrain, right? Um, so, and then it depends, like, obviously, if you're in a city, you'd always want to take that. So you get to kind of pick out of those three what you take, and then you apply group D and group E, right? So that's kind of how that works, just to, just to kind of go over that again. So I have eight firepower. I'm on a VP, which would give me a plus one, which is over here on the uh, observing units on a vantage point is a plus one. And because of the negative one for, basically I'm still surprised. It's the morning of the 16th and I'm like, oh, what's the deal? Um, uh, that gives me negative one, we're not so, so that cancels it. So I'm gonna make my die roll. Ooh, I get a seven. That's pretty juicy. Oops. <laughs> I did not get a seven. So out of habit, I said I'm going to make the die roll, so I made a die roll. So no, I did not. So I hit, I need to do the step. So what I really rolled was a six. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's funny. It's just muscle memory, right? So I got a six. So that's an eight. 
it gives me a 14 plus C and D. So since I don't, since we're not playing live yet, which eventually we play this live all the time, so we won't have to do these uh, markers. So I put a mark, I basically can label his prepared assault marker. So that guy's a 14 plus C and D, so we'll see what that ends up being. So I marked the guns fired. And what I decided was instead of putting all the uh, out of ammo things sideways, I'm just going to leave spades on top of guns that fired. And uh, I'll use the out of ammo markers when they're actually out of ammo. But I don't have to worry about ammo in the beginning. So, All right, next one, spotter. Right there. Target's going to be right there. Marking the guns. That's the one thing is the allies have a lot of guns. So that gives me eight, but minus one for surprise. So it'll be seven plus the deep die roll plus C and D. And I almost did it again. I almost hit the die roll. And I rolled a three. So that's a 10 plus C and D. Okay. Spotter and target. So now we're moving down here and try to defend myself. Here's the target. So he can only call in two due to his size. So I'm guessing he's just a company. Yeah, he's a little armored company, so he can only call in a small one. So uh, two guns. So I'm marking some guns way over there, way down here. Some guns right there. So I got five factors is all, because I can only call in two batteries. I am on a vantage point, so it's 5 plus DR plus C and D. Boom, a 9. That was that was pretty epic there. So it's 14 plus C and D, so that's going to be good. Okay, seems to... Oh, I said I seem to have caught your artillery bug. When I play Clay in this game, when he would do play-by-email files, when I'm the attacker in a game, he just decimates me with his artillery all the time. All right, next one. So we're going to go down here. I wonder if this would be better if I zoomed out. Because you don't need to see the units, and then you'll just see the guns marking. So this guy here, targets there, guns. That's a little better for seeing the guns. So, boom, boom, boom. Uh, gives me eight on a vantage point. So eight plus the die roll plus. I, know I just go right to that stupid die roller when I say that. So, oh, I rolled a big whopping one. So nine plus C and D. So I just marked this thing for him. Next one, so spotter. Target. Now the reason I target that, now I can hover over it now because it's an old file, but when I target it, you know, all I saw was, let's see if I can back up here. So all I see is like, well, there's a lot of dudes under this versus this one, so... I'm going to assume he's got lots of steps in there. Now, he could trick me. You know, he could have, like, a bunch of companies in there and attached units that are small with one step. But I'll take that chance that that's some juicy units. So I feel like I see a lot of movement to myself there. So we mark them and then mark the guns. Boom, 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 boom. So I get seven minus one. I don't know what the word surprise means. Oh, surprise. <laughs> so I mistypoed that. So it's 6 plus DR plus C and D. I roll a 7, which is respectable. Gives me a 13. So I'll mark that. Now, these are pretty nice numbers. I mean, when you're looking at 13s and 14s and stuff, you're starting to do 2 damage and 13. Now, they can drop, you know, like if he has minuses that are going to help him which i'm sure he will right based on well no he doesn't get terrain because he's the attacker so that's why we just say c and d because he won't have defensive works and terrain uh he'll basically get a mix for armor and then unit density so when you're on the attack it's a little more brutal if you're on the defense you get the terrain okay so next one so down here mark this guy already he's the spotter Target, mark the guns, boom, boom, way up there. Two guns in the last stack, so that gives me eight. 
on a vantage point, so 8 plus DR, and then my, uh, plus C and D. A 6, so that's a 14. So again, we're getting some pretty good numbers. Pretty good numbers. Next one, marking this guy here as the spotter. Target. One gun is all I'm going to get right there. So it's three minus one for the surprise. So it ends up being a two plus the DR plus C and D. Got an eight. So it ended up being a 10. So that was worth shooting. So the next one, way down here, kind of the southern bulge. So spotter, target, marking the guns. One, two, three. All right, so then here's an example. So like those three guns ended up being nine firepower, but you can you can choose to only fire so many of the points because, all right, so ammo's not a big deal for me right now, but later on when it be, when you have when you can run out of ammo and you got to make ADD checks, um, and that's a special rule in Walk the Ride. Most games you do right away. If you use nine, you have to roll an eight and a one. The one is probably not going to do anything, but it also makes your chance of running out of ammo more because it's a second volley. So you just say, you know what, I'm only firing two of the three battery, you know, two of the three guns. So that's what I'm doing here. So instead of using all nine, I'm using eight. So it's, uh, and they're on a vantage point. So it's eight plus the die roll plus C and D. I rolled a six, so that's another 14. So that was some, some pretty hot rolling. Next one is down here. So spotter, target, I'm gonna mark some guns. Can only call in two guns. So again, that's because I, well, that's just a little company and an IP, so one, two. So he's gonna call in those two guns to the south. So six minus one for surprise, so five plus the DR plus C and D. I got a one, so that's six plus C and D. So you need at least, uh, I think an eight, a seven or eight. Yeah, if you get seven or lower, that's always a zero, right? So, uh, but I put it on there because you never know, you may be super dense and I could get like a plus two or something and be an eight, but it's not likely. All right, looks like I want one left. So it's the fourth infantry division is gonna be firing and they do not suffer the minus one penalty because they were on their game. So there's the spotter target and the guns. One, two, two guns in the second stack. So that gives me eight firepower, so eight plus VP, so nine plus, this is my best one, a nine, and I get a flipping two. So that's the way it goes. Why couldn't I got like the seven or eight on that one? I just pummeled those guys. Uh, and that's what I said. I go, ah, oh, I could have been killer. So 11 plus C and D. All right. I said, back to you, buddy, having a blast, no pun intended. And we are at only 33 minutes. I think I might make this a shorter one just because I have not seen the other file. Well, you know what? It just says off access offensive fire support. And then he has my reaction. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, that should, because that, I was concerned that it would have all of his ground assaults and that's going to be a long file. So I don't want to do that. So yeah, he doesn't do ground assaults till here. So let's go ahead and do the Axis Offensive Fire Support. So it'll do all of his, so we'll get to see what all those C and Ds were, so that's better anyway, because otherwise you won't know what what we did to him until late, until the next video, that would've been kind of boring. All right, so. All right, so Clay says that's pretty brutal on artillery shots. 
He said, I'll resolve my hits first, starting up north. So I'll start here. So he's using these little spades, which is nice because it moves the map over there. It was a 14 pending C and D. Uh, it's minus one for steps, so he didn't have a lot of dudes in that stack, so that ends up being 13, which is going to be an AS1. If you look right here, 13 is AS1. So that's respectable. Our artillery shift and a hit. He will decide to retreat. So he can retreat and shake off that, um, that hit because it was only one. If there's more than one, then he's going to take damage even if he retreats. But it'll be less. So that was good. Let's see what we did over here. And then he said no need to, he's not going to place the artillery shift marker because it comes off at the end of his turn and he's nowhere near me to attack or anything. So it's kind of redundant. So next, Erica, let out your dog. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but the dog is whining constantly. Wants to go outside. Um, so the next one, so this one down here, it's a 10. He said 10 is the final amount. Uh, so there was no modifiers. They would have been zero or new or you know, whatever. So it ends up being a hit. He'll take the step loss. So the next one down here, it was a 14. Oh, and he must have had some, must have had a bunch of dudes there because I get a plus two. So it went from a 14 to a 16, but oh, those end up being the same, but at least we didn't go down. So that's two step losses. So two hits. He's going to take the step losses. So he took two step losses. That's pretty juicy right there. Next one, down over here. It was a nine pending C and D. So he had a minus two for mix, so there's some armor there, and a plus one for step losses for a total of eight. And eight, I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. Eight there is just an artillery shift, so that's not super devastating. All right, so move down to this one here. That was a 13 pending C and D. Uh, looks like I got a plus one for steps, so he's got a fair amount of guys coming, so that pushes it to a 14, so that's juicy, because we were at an AS1, now we're at two hits. So let's see what he decides to do there. Two hits, oh, he'll take both step losses, so yeah. I thought I remember him retreat more earlier on, but he must have been pushing in there. So next one was a 10. Uh, I got a plus one for the uh, steps. So a 10 was a one and ends up being 11, so they're the same. So one hit, he'll take the step loss. All right, next one's down here. It was a 14. All right, minus two for mix, plus one for steps. Uh, so he put 15, which should have been a 13. So 15, let's see, did we correct that? So it should have been an AS1 and it was a two. Let's see if we correct that later on. So we'll see if we fix that one. He's in a retreat, so he only takes one step, step loss. Um, he could have retreated and not took the step loss or stayed there and took one step loss. So we'll see if we fix that later. All right, so down here, uh, 14. I had a lot of 14s. That's a lot of 14s. I mean, we like that number. 14's good. There's no modifier, so it ends up being a 14 for two hits. He's going to retreat for one and take a step loss for the other. So I'll retreat that guy. Next one down here. 
plus 6. This is the one where it probably is nothing, so no effect. So there's no modifiers. And the last one down over here, oh, that was the big whiff. 11. We got plus 1 for steps, so what did that do? So an 11 went, well, 11 was a 1, and then it went to an AS1. So 12 is the final, so 1 AS1 one hit. He'll take the step loss and the artillery shift. So the artillery shifts, what they do is when he tries to attack me later, that's going to give me a shift in my favor, so that's good. And you can have up to two of those, I think, so, so that was pretty good. All right, my results are done. My barrage, I'll start up north, so... He's going to do things. So I'm going to zoom out then since so he's marking the spotter. Heavy mission because he's in prepared assault. So he's going to bring in eight artillery units. Target. And you'll bring in seven artillery. Boom, 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 boom. It's 20 barrage, which will be two eight barrages and one at four. So remember, you break up all your barrage points into groups of eight. So he has 20 barrage points. I don't even remember that. Um, probably because I pounded me so bad here. But So he gets two barrages of eight plus a four. No ammo depletion this turn. So normally, okay, so the, so the thing is, is because he's doing three barrages that's going to add to his ammo depletion value but early in the game neither of us have to worry about that so the artillery just hammers everything so he's like since i don't have to worry about the extra barrages i'll just fire away so smart i probably should have used those ones where i had a one because i wouldn't have to have rolled but that's my fault i mean i'm on autopilot for normal games so all right so here we go so a two two and a <laughs> so that ends up being a 10, 10, and a 9. So I got pretty lucky there. I mean, he rolled a 2, 2, and a 5. Are you kidding me? That's still going to be each 10 is a hit. And the 9's an artillery shift. So I think, though, with, with my, uh, I'll have the defensive works and terrain will nullify a lot of that. So that was unfortunate. All right, so he's using that to mark mine because he has to find a way to mark it. And they don't have anything. In it. Like normally we'd put a spade there, and in most games the spade you can label it. But this one doesn't let us label the spade. So, all right, so. What's this guy here? Next barrage. Okay, right here is the spotter. Target. Heavy mission, however, I'll just bring in two artillery. One, two. Seven barrage value gets a five, so that ends up being a 12. He'll mark that for me. Next one. Spotter. He's marking the target first. So target, then he marked the spotter. He'll bring in three artillery. One, two, three. It's nine barrage. However, I'll do eight and drop the one. So again, he could have done the one because we don't have to worry about ammo depletion, but we're both so used to not wasting that that we don't, we're not doing it. And he rolled another two. So the artillery gods are not his friend. All right, looks like he's moving down here. Next, target, heavy mission. Nope, oh, click too many times. They'll bring in seven artillery for 24 barrage points, which is uh, three eights. So you got a five, six, and a nine. That's going to be brutal. That's a 13, 14, and a 17. <laughs> Those guys just got pounded. Mm. 
next one. All right, right over here. Spotter is there. Medium mission. Two artillery. One, two. Ends up being five barrage points, so a six and eleven. And you've got one last one, which I think is where we're going to end today. It's going to be down here. So that's the target. Spotter is going to be there. He is on a vantage point. It will be a heavy mission. One, two, three, four, five, six. 17 barrage points. That'll be a 16 barrage. He's going to drop the extra one. So two rolls of eight. And he gets a plus one for the vantage point. That's pretty good. The zero isn't so good. Uh, so he forgot his vantage point. He put 17 and 8. We'll see if we correct that. Oh, so he said, oops, that goes up plus 1 for the vantage point. So 18 and 9. So, yeah. Okay, so that would be the end of it. Um, I think we're going to end there because the next file is going to be... Oh, how much time are we at? We're at 46 minutes. I don't want to chance that file being more than it says it is. It shouldn't be because then after that is the... Well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do that file. We'll wrap it up with that. This should just be the my reaction file that I sent back to him. So we can you can see what his artillery actually did because the next one is his ground ass GA file, which is a ground assault file. So, so let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is so much fun, dude. Okay. I, I just really love playing Goss, and Clay is a blast to play with, so that makes it even more fun. So, okay, first on here. All right, so I'm doing this one. I think it's this one right here. A 10, 10, 9. So I get a minus 2 for wooded rough, minus 2 for the entrenchment, so it's a minus 4. So I ended up being a 6, 6, 5. All no effect. That is, you can't even, I'm not a gambling man, but, and I'm normally not that lucky, but that's, that's pretty lucky right there. All right, next one. This 12. Uh, wooded rough and an ET2, so a minus four, so an eight, so I get an artillery shift. So I put the artillery shift on there. The next one. Should be this 10, I think. Yep. So the 10. Wooded rough and ETT to a 6, so no effect. Next one. Let's see if I can move it and guess. I think it's this right here. This big one here, but let's go look. Yep. 13, 14, 17. Minus 1 for ET. Uh, rough, it's in rough for a minus one. The ET2 is negative two. Uh, there's only two steps there, so it's a negative one. So it's a negative four, ends up being a nine, ten, and a thirteen. So if you look at that, a nine is an AS, a ten is a one, and a thirteen is an AS one. So it ends up being a two AS two. So two artillery shifts and two steps. And I'll have to retreat or I lose both, so I retreat and lose a step. So right here I got a retreat. Where is that at? Right here. Because I only have two companies. So if I take the two hits, they're each dead. If I retreat, um, then I get to divide the remaining, I get to remove one, divide the remaining hits by two, and then to round it up. So basically you, you are left with one hit. So at least I'll only lose one company and I can survive to fight another day versus be dead. So they retreat. And the step loss, I lose the engineer. And there'd still be two AS markers on that guy. I asked him if that was correct. I think he will uh, verify that later. But okay, so down here, this one here should be next. An 11. 
minus two for village, minus two for the ET, uh, minus one for the small unit step, so minus five makes it a six, so no effect. No effect. All right, and then I think this is the last, <laughs> just brutal. It's an 18 and a nine. I, I told them I believe it's a town and not a city. So it's a negative three for that and a negative two for steps. Or a negative two for ET and a negative one for steps. So it's a negative six total. I mean, that's, that's pretty epic getting a negative six. So it ends up being a 12 and a three, so an AS one. So I have to, re I have to retreat, otherwise they'd be dead because I'm a company. So what did I do? Yep. That's what I said. I got a retreat or I'm dead. So here I had a question for him. I said, I want to retreat into this nice entrenchment, but I think I have to retreat to the south because you can't retreat next to the enemy, right? So he'll probably answer that for me. I'm not going to look it up while we're playing, but so I retreated to the south. Because I said, let me know if I could retreat to the southwest, because I would prefer that. And I said, back to you, buddy. So yeah, so I'm glad we did that, because that would uh, that would resolve all that. So the next time we get together on here, it's going to be the German ground assault. But uh, yeah, so let's get an overall look of things. And we've got all the spades on here for all the guns that have fired. That works pretty good. And uh, we're going to see how the Germans continue to push on. As you can see, the Goss system is big. It's got lots going on, but there's really not that much. I mean, there's, you know, 10% of the stuff you do 90% of the time. And um, so it's really not that complex. If anyone's got any questions on the game, feel free to ask. I know it pretty well. So, I, you know, and if I don't, I know where to look up the information. I don't do a lot of looking up while we're doing the replays. Uh, because I don't want to slow down the video with me looking up rules. That's why I prefer to do it as a replay versus the live, because then I then when we look up rules and take our time to do that, we're not wasting your time on that. But, yeah, so that's the German thing. I had a good time showing you the file and uh, how things are moving along, and I'll get this one posted up here today, and uh, hopefully you can comment below, let us know what you think. Uh, what you like, what you don't like. Remember to subscribe and you can support the channel by using the Amazon link. You can buy anything on Amazon with that link. I link it to game stuff, but if you go, if you click on that link and go buy a pen, I get a small little donation from Amazon for doing that. So I'd appreciate the support. Plus I need to get so many sales anyway to keep my affiliate program running. So um, please help the, pro please help the program. So thanks for watching and we'll, uh, We'll uh, hopefully see you in a week or two again.